I would straight up annihilate you at a game of ping pong. Let's get into it. Okay, Kev, you just came back from a tournament of competitive gaming. Yeah. And I have a question yeah. for you. Mm-hmm. Is competitive gaming good for the consumer? Yes. Wow, interesting. Yes, it right is. Right off the bat. I, I have, I have really I disagree. Opinions on it. Okay, but I want to hear what you have to say. Okay. I'll, I'll, get into, I'll get into it first. Okay. So, some of the most popular games that have like lasted years and years and years, people playing them, have also had strong competitive scenes behind them. Okay. And I think a big reason of that is not because they're like competitive worth, but rather the values that kind of come alongside of a game. Give me an competitively example. Competitively worthy. Um, so, for example, um, Super Smash Brothers. It's a really, really good, easy one to do because, you know, at the very high end of the game, it's incredibly, incredibly deep and difficult and competitive and stuff. But that's what, not what the game is meant for. Right. Yeah, the game is meant as a party game, play with friends and have laughs and stuff. Um, and I think some of the things that make it really um, good for competitiveness is also some of the things that make it really good for repeated playing in kind of like a more casual way. Because yeah. it's always kind of frustrating when like, you know, you're just playing a game and something just doesn't work inconsistently and like it's just kind of hard to figure out how it works. And so, you know, those kind of downfalls will completely ruin a game from being competitive. Right. So if you know a game is competitive, then you know it doesn't fall into a bunch of like traps such as like unfair randomness or uh, bad controls and I stuff like that. Saying. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I, I feel like if a game is competitively good, you know, that's also going to be really good, good. Yeah, ca for casual gamers. And you, know, you see it in lots and lots of places. Rocket League is another great place for this. Yeah. But, you know, it's really easy to pick up and play. However, it's really kind of complex. And so what benefit are you implying that if competitive games are to become more commonplace or more accepted, I guess, mm -hmm. does that benefit the consumer? Because that's kind of what we're, we're getting towards is the, is the question, really. Um, yeah, I believe so. Like, the, the competitiveness like is probably going to build a scene around the game. Yeah. At, so at the very least, you'll have this one kind of scene around the game that's kind of really hardcore for it. And, you know, that kind of prompts the developer to kind of give more support uh, to mm -hmm. the game if they can. Um, and also, you know, just in general, the community contributions you get of having a scene kind of around a game. Right. You know, I, I think it's good for everybody. Okay. I'm going to come out from my side of things. Okay. My side is honestly a little more selfish. As you guys know out there, I'm kind of a competitive person, but when it comes to games, I only play video games for fun. And I don't even play games that much anymore, but I think I can still call myself a gamer. And I don't care about competitive games whatsoever. And I personally think that if competitive games become super popular, that, uh, I don't know, that, that like studios, not studios, but uh, producers are just going to move towards, oh, competitive games are hot right now, let's just make competitive, you know what I mean? And yeah. I feel like that's going to oversaturate the market, which hopefully it doesn't come to that, but like, I don't want 18 balls. Like we're getting so many MOBA or MOBA-like games coming out right now because yeah. League of Legends is hot and everyone wants to, Fuck off. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's just... That's probably just me, and I know I'm... I feel like I'm in the minority here. Yeah. But... It's definitely, like, a market trend that could potentially be kind of unhealthy for a short term. Yeah. Like, it happens all the time. Like, it's, you know... It's like currently shooter, just passing like with the MOBAs, but before yeah. that, shooters and collect yeah. 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 There's a whole bunch of these genres that kind of, you know, get oversaturated for a while, and then they kind of even out. Yeah. And I, I think usually... in end you're really better for it i think one of the only genres to really get hugely damaged by it was the collectathon game yeah i mean there were too many of them coming out right yeah yeah everyone was just kind of pooping them out and then the quality went down yeah yeah and then other you know newer genres came and became popular and collectathons just fell behind because they were just doing what banjo kazooie did over and over and over again but i think a lot of that change was due to technological limitations yeah, and yeah. those were advanced in the future so slightly different but I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's good, but I guess nothing in excess yeah. would, would be kind of my approach oh, yeah, on definitely. it. Like, like, I, I wouldn't like it. 
Yeah, it's one of the best things about video games, really, is you can, there's such a variety of video games. Yeah. You know, playing StarCraft 2 is nothing at all like playing Telltale's The Walking Dead. Exactly. There, there Not is, at all similar. There is quite a wide variety there. Like, to put it in some perspective, though, just in trying to understand competitive gaming, because I feel like an old man, I just don't get it. Yeah. I watched, uh, what was the documentary? I'll Work, I'll Play. Have you seen it? It's pretty good. I haven't seen it yet. But, like, I just. <laughs> I don't. A lot of people are there. It's awesome. It's. I don't care at all. I don't know. I just yeah. gotta play games for fun. I don't know. I see where it comes from. Like, you know, people are competitive, and a lot of the times, like it's these people, like you know, they really, really enjoy these video games and play a lot, and then they, you know, they feel like they're good at it. Like they're yeah. beating their friends or whatever. Yeah. Um. And then they find out, oh, there's a bigger, bigger thing to this. Yeah. And then you know, that that encourages them to like kind of get into that more. Yeah, it's definitely just this. I don't know. I was, I was gonna say it's like a stepping ladder, but it's really not as difficult as climbing a ladder. You kind of roll down the hill of, yeah. you know, getting more and more into it um, until you start getting beaten really badly at nationals. I just need to make a comment. So I, I just I find it uh, interesting how the internet has really leveled the playing field because I remember way back in the day, like you'd go down to your local arcade and you'd be like, this guy Jim, he is best Street Fighter player in the world, man. He is. Yeah. Like, no one can beat him. Yeah. And then online started to roll out. Just like, oh, Jim's not very good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah I get a, it definitely took away from that mysticism of it all. But ignorance is mysticism, I suppose. Yeah, I'd say that the other way around. Ignorance is mysticism. What? Mysticism is ignorance. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it's bliss. That's for damn sure. Right about that. Yeah.